What's good, Commanders fans? Um, I was just about to make a video congratulating Jane Daniels for making Offensive Rookie of the Week, but I just got breaking news about Emmanuel Forbes, and I I just Googled, of course, just like every, you know, I'm not a doctor, was born at a Holiday at a Holiday Inn, or, or I mean, I didn't spend the night in high, whatever the joke is about being a doctor. Emmanuel Forbes injured his thumb, so I'm gonna read the tweet for you guys. Um, I know I just butchered that that joke there, but. Um, uh, this is from Ian Rappaport. He tweeted out, sources, corner, Commander's cornerback Emmanuel Forrest Jr. will undergo surgery tomorrow to repair a torn UCL, UCL in his thumb, a blow to the secondary. And a lot of people are joking to say it's not a blow to the secondary. It's actually a uh, help to the secondary that Emmanuel Forrest won't be there. And I'm not going to pile on the guy. I mean, like I said before, like I was rooting for him to play better, but he's just not good enough. Do I think he's an NFL caliber corner? Um, the way he's played, honestly, I hate to even say that is I, I think he's the NFL caliber corner, but he's more of a second string corner, to be honest. He's more of a rotational corner for him to be a first round pick. Uh, it's just not good enough. And he probably hurt his thumb on the double penalty, which is very rare to see. And I said that as well um, in my reaction video that he had a pass interference and a face mask and he probably hurt his thumb on the face mask. That's probably most likely what happened because after that, he didn't get back in. Kind of got benched and injured at the same time. I feel like if he was playing well, he probably would have played through it. Like if he was locking down Mike Evans or locking down Chris Godwin and Jalen McMillan and Trey Palmer, I feel like he would have been, he probably would have toughed it out and played through it. But who knows? Uh, and he's going to be out for quite some time, man. I'm looking at the... Um, the write-up or just Googling UCL thumb injuries and whatnot and, the, and the, the the recovery time for it does take some time. I mean, we don't know if it was a partial partial tear or a complete tear. Surgery with an internal brace, the method can reduce recovery time to five to six weeks and patients can start moving their thumb within days. So it, he could miss like four to five games or something like that. Um, I'm literally looking at tweets coming in from like John Kime and JP Finley and stuff like that. So JP Finley says, uh, uh, imagine the conversation for commanders, coaches slash front office. Hey, Forbes needs surgery. Should we do it now or wait? How many people scream to wait? Question mark. So I don't know if he's trying to throw, throw shade there. One of my own Forbes saying um, that they should wait on the surgery so he can play because I'm looking at the, the Google write up too. And uh, it says it usually heals within four weeks without surgery and normal function returns around six to eight weeks. So, I mean, maybe he could have came back faster or whatever. I, I don't know. But uh, Michael Davis is going to be getting playing time. And that's what I wanted to see huh? anyway, whether Forge was healthy or not. I wanted to see Michael Davis get some playing time because they signed this guy. And uh, he had some good years with the Chargers. I know last year was bad for Michael Davis with the Chargers. But, I mean, he probably would be better than Forbes. Honestly, he really would be. And Noah, I know Ibanagabe is a good, he's a good backup. Our secondary is still not good. Like, don't get, don't, don't get me wrong with Forrest being out, but this is really unfortunate. I, I was just thinking about the video where Eric Stokes was saying that uh, in, in the war room to Martin Mayhew, he was like, I would take a man Forbes over Christian Gonzalez. And Christian Gonzalez had a pretty darn good good game against Jamar Chase, a legitimate receiver, top 10 receiver in this league. Jamar Chase is arguably top five, but really not arguably, he is top five in the league. We had a man Forbes just struggling against, you know, backups at times. I mean, look at the preseason game against the backup wide receiver, I can't even name his name, for the Jets and the third-string quarterback for the Jets. So, And he's 100, he's he's 180 pounds, he gained weight, but you look at the picture in the offseason. I'm going on a tangent on Mayo Forrest, but this probably is it. This is like, this is it. He's not going to be back next year. I'm just calling it what it is. And uh, he, he's not going to be back next year. I, this is a new regime. I know they liked him in the draft, but they want to get their own guys in here next year. They're going to draft a corner. They're going to sign a corner. And um, this is why also I say we, we should have taken a look at Stephon Gilmore, but it is what it is on that as well. But, um, yeah, he, he's going to be out for quite some time. I, I would imagine he would miss four to six games looking at these write-ups and whatnot. And I don't think they're really stressing about it either, like, to keep it real. I don't think Dan Quinn and Joey Jr. are really uh, uh, stressing about it. Honestly, this might just be a low-key uh, way of benching him. But they're, they're, I feel like this is an easy out of benching a former first round pick and shout out to Ron Rivera for that pick as well. And Eric Stokes and the likes of the Ron Rivera uh, front office and regime. But um, yeah, I mean, this is unfortunate. I mean, it just, 
the guy just couldn't get right from getting beat by AJ Brown and dominated and DJ Moore dominating him basically. And, and other guys, Brandon, are cooking them on that one play with the Niners and then uh, Marvin Mims with the Broncos cooking them downfield. I can name countless numerous times where he got beat. Then he got benched last year as well for like, was it Danny Johnson? Shout out to Danny Johnson. Danny Johnson replaced him at times. So, uh, and then he was talking trash to Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs was beating them down the field. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, his best game was the Patriots game. That was the Patriots had zero receivers that could really hurt you. So, um, Emmanuel Forbes, yeah, I mean, this is it for him. I mean, I, some people are saying trade him in the offseason. I don't, I don't really see anybody looking for him. I think at best you probably get the John Ridgeway deal where you attach a pick to him, like attach a seventh round pick to Emmanuel Forbes, and you trade him for a six. That's the Adam Peters special, special where you attach a player, you, you attach a pick to the player and trade him for a higher pick, like Jahan Dotson. You attached. The, what would we attach? Uh, a fifth round pick, and then we ended up getting a third. So that's something I could see with these first round picks that Adam Peters did not draft. That's the way you move on from them. Uh, and then, yeah, that's 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 wrapping a bow. Let me know, Forbes. I'm going to see some other information here if there's some other tweets. Because right now, people are just live tweeting. Uh, reacting to the situation here. So I wanted I wanted to I wanted to make a celebration video for Jaden Daniels, but this is just what it is right now. This is what it is. And um undergo surgery tomorrow to repair a torn UCL in his thumb. If anybody else has more information, like it is legitimate, uh not even just a doctor or has more information, comment down below. But you guys have experienced if you have torn your UCL or if you've seen it before and uh, how long you think he may be out uh, for the foreseeable future. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just, a, he, I hate to call people a bust, but, uh, he, 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 he's getting close to it. He's getting close to the bust, to the bust, um, to the bust word for sure. He's getting close to it for sure. All right. Um, I guess we'll transition to Jane Daniels and celebrate there. Um, and then I'll talk about some of the quotes that we got from, uh, uh, Joey Jr. And also, I might talk about some of the quotes that we got from Joey Jr. And um, what the freak is his name? Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury. Oh, shout out to Jaden Daniels. Let's, let's congratulate uh, Jaden Daniels for getting Offensive Rookie of the Week. He was the first quarterback in NFL history to rush for 80 yards and two touchdowns in his first game. Uh, the only person who I thought could really compete with him this week was Xavier Worthy. Joe Alt, the offensive tackle, had a really good game against the Raiders. But, you know, offensive tackles don't get this award. But uh, Xavier, Xavier Worthy had two touchdowns for the Chiefs. I thought he was the only guy that could really compete. Like Malik Neighbors didn't have a good enough game because the Giants were awful. Brian Thomas had a touchdown of 47 yards. It's just not good enough. And uh, Lab McConkey, no, yeah, Lab, Lab McConkey had a touchdown. And um, Brock Bowers had six catches for 58 yards. So that was the competition that he really had for the voting. So he definitely had a way better showing than all those guys combined. And uh, Jane, you know, he did a good job really running. He had a 7.8 completion percent rate last week. Was 11th in the NFL. Uh, was top 10 in rushing yards and in passing yards in the NFL. So those are, those are some good numbers to look at. And he was seventh in EPA per play among all quarterbacks and fourth in success rate, second in expected completion percentage. So there were some things he did not see down the field. Did miss B-Rob. He did miss Ertz down the field or on a quick slant where he got sacked and fumbled. And then he also missed Terry downfield. So I'm not going to act like he had a, a awesome game. I thought he had a solid game, like a C-plus type of game, C-plus, B-minus. The runs were incredible. The scrambling was incredible. It was elite. It was like a cheat code. It was like nobody could really stop him. I mean, he was so elusive and just so quick down the sideline. It was incredible watching him. It was fun to watch how elusive he was, where he could turn like a second and 11 and turn it into a first down and just take the soul of a defense. That's what he did with his legs. But he has to run to look down the field and pass. But if he has a lane, go ahead and take it. I have no problem with him running. He did run more than what RG3 ever ran in his career. He had 16 attempts. RG3's highest attempts, I think, was 13. But Jane Daniels was very impressive. He had, a, he had a good debut. I thought he had a good debut. Way better than Caleb Williams. Way better than Bo Nix. All the rookie quarterbacks, he looked way, way better than those guys. And didn't turn the ball over. Just got to keep his helmet on. And ran for two tuds as well. All right. Um, and then also Cliff Kingsbury, he said he called the worst play that he's ever called. And Jane Daniels, uh, he said, I called one of the worst plays I've ever called in my career. And he just took it in. He just took it and ran it into the end zone. That was hilarious. It's, it's bad, but not good at the same time. You know, he took called a terrible play, but Jane Daniels, that's the thing. Like, Jane Daniels can make something happen. He can make something shake. He can make something shake, and he can miss guys missing a phone booth. He's got to slide correctly. He's doing that tumble roll right now. But as long as he gets down and gets um, out of harm's way, I think he's fine. 
And then Kingsbury also misspoke. He said Noah Brown did not play because of an injury, but then he walked it back and said that Noah, Noah Brown was a healthy scratch for Tampa due to, due to being acquired days before week one. I think Dan Quinn misspoke, misspoke about something yesterday too. I forgot what it was, but he misspoke about something. I think it was a male Forbes injury as well. He misspoke about it. So the coaches back-to-back have misspoke two days in a row. Uh, Jerzon Johnny Newton did practice today. We'll see what happens with him. John Kime does not think that he is a high probability, probability that Johnny Newton misses the game again. And like I said last week, I would not be surprised if he misses the game again uh, this week. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll, we'll see what happens on Friday and what they decide to do. Uh, Joe Jr., of course, said they got a tackle better. He was surprised by how bad they tackled. Uh, that is on Joey Jr. And he took fault and he took accountability on that. So we don't want to see that again against Daniel Jones and uh, Devin Singletary, Malik Neighbors, and, and guys like that to, uh, on Sunday, which is unacceptable. But they got to be violent like like Joe Wood Jr. preached all offseason. They were not violent at all. All right. Um, and then Kayvon Thibodeau. I guess I'll talk about this tomorrow. My preview video him not saying it's a rivalry. I can't say I disagree with Kayvon Thibodeau, but I'm just not a fan of the guy and how he handles interviews. But we just got to put up or shut up and, 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 and stop him and shut him down. Tired of seeing him have a good game every time we play. He plays against us. I'm tired of seeing Daniel Jones, who who's getting booed off his own field and his jersey's getting burnt, and players saying that that opponents saying that they're sorry for Daniel Jones playing well against us, you know, all the time. So I'm tired of it. Really am. All right, you guys. Um, and yeah, JP Finley also tweeted out a male force was a full participant yesterday, but then they came on and just decided. Uh, John Kimes also said, not sure if he'll yet go on IR. Might not have to. So he may he may not be out for long. We'll see. We'll see. He may he may only be out for a couple weeks. We'll see. All right, you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think. Health Commanders, as always, peace.